Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habita fillah continuing on In our basic fiqh series And we were speaking about We reached a portion of the treaties Where we're going to talk about the nullifiers of wudu Those things which break our wudu the first thing, uh, urination, defecation, and passing wind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or any of you comes from answering the call of nature. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will not accept the prayer of one of you if he breaks the wind until he performs wudu. This is in Bukhari and Muslims. This is the hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yaqbal Allah salata ahadikum idha ahdatha hatta yatawaddu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept the prayer of any one of you if he makes hadith until he prunes for wudu. So hadith is much broader than just uh, passing wind. Hadith ahabati fillah. There's hadith al-akbar wa hadith al-asgar. Hadith al-akbar, the major hadith, that refers to uh, like a woman's bleeding during her menses or the postpartum bleeding after having a child uh, and of course Janaba after having sexual relations that this is the major hadith hadith al-asgar the minor hadith which also invalidates your wudu is those things like the passing wind or passing gas and urination or defecation akramakum Allah with the major hadith hadith al-akbar this requires that a person makes ghusl before they're able to pray hadith al-asgar the minor hadith which we referred to which we uh, said was uh, passing wind urinating and defecating akramakum Allah this requires that a person uh, makes wudu the second thing is semen, midi, and wadi. The uh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked about a midi and he said, make wudu. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said, one must make ghusl for semen. As for midi and wadi, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wash your penis and make wudu like you would for prayers. So that lets us know that uh, semen, of course, uh, from sexual intercourse, ejaculation, this is one of the causes for a person to have to make uh, uh, that breaks their, invalidates their wudu and which requires them to make ghusl. The wet dream and the uh, premature ejaculation from these uh, fluids, it only requires that we make, uh, that we wash our private parts and then we make wudu. The third thing, a habit of Allah, is deep sleep or unconsciousness. So if a person becomes unconscious or they fall into a deep sleep or they are intoxicated, meaning drunk or high on weed, and insanity. All of these things, uh, these break invalidate a person's wudu. That means that if, for example, someone, uh, may Allah forbid, but they, uh, they had wudu, and then they got high. They smoked some weed, they got really high, and they wanted to pray after that. They, they still wanted to, they were a person who regularly prays, but they have this, they are tested with smoking weed, for example. In that situation, then of course they can't pray when they're high, and it has invalidated their wudu. So obviously when their high has come down, uh, when they're no longer high, and they, uh, they would be required to make wudu. Likewise, a person in deep sleep. And the reason there's a distinguishment between the deep sleep as the minor sleep and the ulama, they speak about what uh, differentiates between those two types of sleep. 
So the minor sleep does not invalidate your wudu. For example, you still have some sort of consciousness. For example, if you are in a light sleep and something is in your hand and you drop it, for example, a pencil or what have you, and that's it, and it causes you to wake up, then that is the extent to which you would not need to make wudu because that was a very light sleep. You were still conscious of what uh, of your actions and you were easily awakened. However, the deep sleep in which you would not realize whether you drop something or not, then this would require that a person makes wudu. The fourth thing is sexual intercourse, and we already covered uh, about the uh, a little bit about that. Sexual intercourse, of course, breaks your wudu. Touching the penis directly, touching the private parts. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever touches his uh, penis, let him make wudu a karmakum Allah. And this is in Tirmidhi. Uh, with regards to this, the touching of the private parts, the scholars mention as far as tafsil because there's other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said it's a part of your body. So without getting into the long drawn out uh, arguments of our ulama, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, Kadimin wa Hadithin, that some of the ulama say regarding the details is that is touching the penis with shahwa. That they, this is how they make a, a gem between those two ahadith. That they say that by uh, touching your private part with desires, that this invalidates your wudu. Another group of the ulama says, no, even if you lightly brush it, brush your private parts, even after making ghusl or what have you, that this invalidates your wudu. So this is a, a, a difference of opinion, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The sixth invalidator of one's wudu is apostasy is when a person leaves the fold of islam of course when they leave the fold of islam of course it invalidates all of their their deeds and would and of course it invalidates their wudu min bab al ola the seventh nullifier of one's wudu is eating camel's meat. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, shall we make wudu after eating camel's flesh? He said, yes. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And with regards to the camel's flesh, this means that eating any of the uh, meat of the camel, regardless of whether it's the kidneys, the fat, the head, whatever, all of this invalidates the wudu because it's still a part of eating the camel's meat. However, drinking camel's milk will not uh, invalidate a person's wudu. So this is uh, different. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu ordered a group of people to drink from its milk and did not order them to make wudu after that. So that is Dalil from the Shara, from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that verifies for us that drinking uh, camel's milk does not invalidate our wudu. But of course, eating the flesh, eating the meat of camels, this invalidates our wudu, no matter how it's cooked. And uh, an issue that arises, uh, as the author, he mentions, it is best that a person makes wudu after eating gravy of camel's meat in order to be on the safe side. So this is ahwat. This is the safest way in order to, to just be safe in the issue because this all of these issues are uh, relate to a person's prayer so you want to be very cautious when it comes to uh, when you have tahara and when you don't have tahara and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil